there was an article, I think it's about a month old, talking about the indirect market in 2023 and how it's going to suck, but it doesn't have to. And this is from writer Brandon Schatz. I believe he's a comic book retailer. And it sounds like comic retailers are absolutely screwed. There really isn't anything working right now with comic books. And we're going to talk about it. How you doing, Doc? Well, I'm obviously better than the comic book market. Uh, so well, I'm actually fine. You're doing better than Brandon Schatz. And if Brandon Schatz or anybody at the Comics Beat actually watches this video, I do want to say this up front. Get to the fucking point next time because you wrote about 5,000 words of absolute gibberish before you actually got to the point of your actual article. If you want to maintain your readership, you actually have to engage them almost immediately. This dude went on forever and ever, but there were some very interesting things we need to talk about. First up, he says, in 2023, you're going to see all this play out in several ways. First, the $4.99 single issue comic will be standard by the end of the year. You saw the creep last year. For the smaller companies, it will be a necessity in order to keep publishing their titles. For the larger companies, it will be similar, but to justify the existence of the format in a world where the line needs to keep going up at all costs. Going over like the $4.99 mark, where now you have to break a 10 instead of just a 5, once you add in, you know, sales tax just to buy one single comic is going to drive people even further away. Every time you add another digit to the front of that dollar amount, you are pushing readers away. And the $2.99 was a breaking point for a lot. $3.99 was a breaking point for more. $4.99 I don't think the size of that breaking point is even measurable at this point. It's crazy how he does talk about multiple times within the article that they have to keep up the volume. That's the real issue. It's a volume problem. But he never really talks about the reason there's a volume problem is because a lot of customers left. Some of them because the price is too high. A lot more just because the quality is so bad. He never even really addresses that. He doesn't you know, address the readers leaving part. He addresses all of those ancillary reasons why readers left, but the overall concern of people stopped buying and our audience and customer base is one tenth of what it was is not addressed at all. He talks, he brings this article in from 1995. And yes, that article does have a lot of the same complaints as we still do have right now. The one thing he never talks about though is the fact that it drove readers away. All those problems that were present in 1995 that are still present in 2023 had a consequence because they were never addressed. And half of this article is him basically saying, well, it's been the same problems forever and the comics industry is still here, so it'll be here forever and it's never going away. But he never looks at the fact that there were consequences, price point, glut, quality, too many books, not enough good talent, all those items that he, he talks about. Each year that that problem is not addressed, you lose more percentage of your readers. Guess what your end result is? Well, we have a volume problem. He also says you're going to see Diamond continue to struggle. Penguin Random House will continue to be just fine and they'll announce another publisher or two joining their ranks. No one's small. You'll see this because they were built outside of the direct market in a system that was quite frankly built better. They also didn't start up a distribution arm to make money today. They did it so they could make money tomorrow. It will continue to feed the graphic novel market even as it becomes harder and harder for any and all parties to turn a profit on the production of single issues itself. It will continue to exist because Penguin Random House can support that better than Diamond can, and Lunar will continue to exist because they don't pretend to be anything else other than who they are. He really does spell a lot of doom and gloom from Diamond Comics. We did hear that they're going to cut shipping costs, I believe, by 40%, but I've talked to a lot of, of retailers, and they're just not competitive in the market today. The writer of this article, he does make a few points on the fact that, hey, look, they were the market leader for a long time. They were the sole distributor. And they did nothing to innovate. They didn't change. And then when the, the pandemic happened, people started seeking other options. Now, all of a sudden, they were the dinosaur that was too big, that couldn't change, that didn't change. And he somehow gives credit to Lunar and Penguin Random House 
other than the fact that they didn't have anything to fix, they didn't have any reorganization to do. Yeah, Diamond's going to have that problem. They were monolithic and they need to change. But his thing here about how Penguin Random House isn't built within the system and was built in a system that frankly works better, Lunar doesn't pretend to be something it's not. It's all horseshit gloss covering over the fact that they're all doing the same fucking thing. They're, they're not all doing the same thing, Doc. I can tell you that right now. If you are getting your comic books from Lunar, you're getting them very early in comparison to Diamond. If you're getting your comic books from Lunar, they are packed absolutely magnificently. You are not going to have any damaged comics. You will not get that from Diamond Comics. And I've also heard very good things about Penguin Random House getting things early. And they have no shipping fees, which makes it a much better deal for local comic shops. Oh, I agree on all that. My point of they're all doing the same thing isn't there the way that they actually give you the comics. Their job is their to purpose. distribute comics. Their purpose is identical and their functioning is essentially identical. Everything else is just they do it better because Diamond didn't have to do better. And the company that doesn't have to do better, they end up getting left in the dust. That's this is basic business 101. His glossing here over how Penguin Random House was built in a system that's frankly better. It's comic distributing is comic distributing. No, but they were they were built in the book system. They're I, a book I, distributor primarily. No, no, I, I I get that, but but the when they jumped into the comic distributing system, the system remains the same whether they're present or not. Well, we shall see what the future is. It doesn't look like Diamond. According to this guy, has a future. You mentioned he points out all these problems, but then he acts like everything's going to be okay. Comics as a whole will always be fine. The medium is resilient. Even when some of the parts that keep it going are not, single issues will, in fact, never disappear. But their place in the industry at large will have to be rethought. The direct market itself within the industry, the system of retailers, that is going to have to change into something else entirely. We cannot be relying on single issues as a point of revenue anymore. So comic books are fine, but you actually can't make any money selling them. <laughs> yes, exactly. It is nonsensical bullshit. This is something that I disagree with some of the, the CG folks, some of the YouTube folks. The future of comic books will never, can never, and won't ever be the graphic novel market. It just it won't is, work. Doc. No. What do but you think manga is? Not for manga American is the majority comics. of sales in North America. And it's not, all graphic novels. My point is on that, that it is not the American comic book market. That's not what it is. You could change it into something else, and that's fine. Then it ceased being the comic book market is now just a graphic novel market. It's the book market. We have more young readers today for comic books than ever before, and none of them are reading periodicals. They're all coming in on graphic novels. That is going to be the format that they understand as being comic books. They're not going to really know, you know, a single issue periodical comic book, and they're not going to think that's comic books. They're going to think of Dogman when they were kids. It's going to be oh, completely different than you and I. I completely agree. My, th that's that's where I'm going with this. You you will have something that is called comics that isn't comics because it's just picture books in a book market. It's just the comic book industry will become part of the book market, and it'll be no different than a draw, John Grisham novel. It's all going to be the same. It's not going to be the comic book market anymore. That's fine. Comics won't be there anymore. They'll call it comics. But it won't be comics anymore. It'll still be comics. It just won't be comics the way you do them as a kid, Doc. Uh, okay. Well, at that point, then little golden hey, man, books are comics. We've gone on eight track players. Think about that. We've gone from eight track players to cassette tapes to CDs to MP3s, to, you know, to entire digital music libraries, man. Things evolve. I understand that. And guess what? The actual structure of music has not changed in the process. You can the way still... that it's distributed, the way that it's consumed, the way people listen to their music. No one listens to an entire album of music any way that, anymore the way you and I did as kids. You listen to the tracks that you want in the order that you want because the way that you consume it has changed. The way people are consuming comic books is changing, Doc. We're the dinosaurs, man. No, I, I don't disagree with that. But guess what? You, can see, you still sell music by the album. Or no, buy the box. No one buys music by the album anymore. That's they, the they, point. They sold, they sold singles in the 1920s on fucking vinyl. They're selling singles on iTunes today. 
or you can listen to the radio in, in a giant box in your living room, or you can listen to it on your telephone, and it's just called Spotify. Guess what? It's still the same thing. You can buy singles. You can buy an album. You can listen to the radio. How it's delivered is irrelevant. Oh, I think it's the most important thing in the world, Doc. That's the future of comic book. The direct market isn't really built for the future. Okay. If if we want to do a music comparison on this, actually, it would be the single issues are selling singles. It's selling one song on iTunes, on a on a single cassette or a but single what if that 45. One, that one single you bought on iTunes was only one eighth of the actual song. And you had to wait eight months to get the other eight parts of the song to put them all together. Buy that a wouldn't tool make any album. sense to younger people now, would it? Well, I mean, if it's a tool album, then it is only <laughs> one eighth of one out one song. So um Hey, Listen, uh, I understand you're trying to find a way around with the, the great point that I'm making here, Doc, but graphic novels are comics. You, know, you can get graphic novels of Spider-Man, Batman. You can get graphic novels of manga. You can get graphic novels of Dogman and all that stuff. They are comic books. They're illustrated uh, visual storytelling You know, with uh, with dialogue and internal monologue and all those things that are in there. My my point here is that if you if you count Dogman and Raina Telgemeier today. All right, fine. Let's go back in time and start counting golden books back in the 80s. And you can see exactly how shitty comic books is right now. In which case, they sell a million dog, man. Guess what? They sold three million of fucking Briar Rabbit. Yeah, well, they don't sell Briar Rabbit in your local comic book shop, but I guarantee you they sell dog, man, because it's a comic book. Actually, I don't know if my comic shop has maybe not your comic dog book man. shop but i guarantee you go to a comic book shop here in the philippines and i've seen dog man and i guarantee if you go to uh yule carter's comic book shop in berkeley california you're going to see some dog man you're going to see some manga because he's embracing the entire comic book industry well you uh, have to because you can't make money off of single issue sales anymore regardless my point is here i think we've deviated so far from it this article ignores the fact that nobody buys fucking comic books anymore and that's why they can't sell them and not offering any single solutions he hints unless you can have a sub stack because he pimps that thing out about eight times in his nine thousand words he's not he makes entire, some good points he does make some good points in this article but then he undercuts them with the well whistling past the graveyard bullshit of oh and then everything's gonna be fine also we have to entirely change how the fundamentals of the direct market work and well yeah we built it wrong in the first place so blame well, those guys in the 70s talk, is is the way that you massive change on that level takes capital and there's no capital because there's no money to be made on single issue comic book sales which is the bottom line problem that he's pointing out here and and it's why comic book retailers should be scared shitless to be heavily invested in comic books you need to be in graphic novels you need to be in tabletop gaming you need to have e-commerce. You need to have a variety of options to make money. You can't have all your eggs in that comic book basket because it's putting so many people out of business right now. Well, there's a little bit of revisionist history in here too. But yeah, I mean, he, he does make some good points that essentially they can't rely on that. We all know that. We've been saying that for five years now on this channel. And we were probably called all kinds of ists and phobes for doing it by the same assholes that are writing these fucking articles right now. Once again, what's the difference between a conspiracy theorist and the news? Approximately five years in the comics industry. Yeah, apparently so. It, it's, it was interesting stuff. I do not recommend anyone read the article because he does not know how to get to the point. But I basically gave you the important stuff that kind of happens at the end as he rambled for a fucking word upon word it, it took a long time to actually get to the meat of this so i'm worried about local comic book shops i'm worried about the direct market and i think we all should be uh, agreed here um hey if you want one reason why you shouldn't believe this guy doesn't have any credibility he refers to the beat as one of the last bastions of comic book uh discussions as many of you know i'm an enormous proponent of local comic shops i support the direct market i want owners and managers of local comic book shops to make lots of money and fill everyone's houses with comic books and we need these now more than ever we are losing our geek culture it is being hijacked by corporate america if we don't support mom and pop local comic book shops it's never going to come back definitely watch this video very good conversation there's also a link 
in the video description.